Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today we're going to have a quick look at an awesome bass line from the song Pump It Up by Elvis Costello and the Attractions. The bass player is the fabulous Bruce Thomas, and this bass line is a great example of how to make use of some cool little moves around basic chord tones in making a kick-ass, memorable bass riff. So there are a couple of riffs that I'm going to break down here. The first is the intro riff that you probably all know. The tune is roughly in B but starts on an F sharp chord and this awesome line. Now, this line appears in a few different ways throughout the tune. It starts here on F sharp, but it soon moves up to B for the main verse riff, then later appears on an E chord. So it's, it's worth learning the lines and then just moving it around the neck as practice. So we begin on an F sharp, second fret of the E string. Then we've got D sharp up to the E, first fret to the second fret on the D string. So we play up and then back. That's one of the main character notes in there. We're gonna come back to that later, so. So we've just got quarter notes for the first two, and then it's eight, so. Then we've got another characteristic little move of A to A sharp, open string to first uh, fret on the A string. So. And then we've got F sharp twice, open E, back to the F sharp. Okay, so. And then we just have E, F sharp, E, as a little turnaround kind of move to bring us back, so. As for the technique here in the fretting hand, I'm starting on the second finger, so that's the middle finger. That sets you up nicely for playing with the first and second fingers, index and middle, for the D sharp to the E. And as I do that, I'm bringing the thumb round to mute that E string. I mean, I'm using the, this hand as well, but that just gives you a little bit more muting, so. And then just open A string to the first finger there. And then we're back on that second finger for the F sharp, open string and back, so. Then in the picking can, you can pretty much do what you want. It's pretty much all alternate picking. I'm starting with the first finger there. And, uh, and I'm just moving the thumb from the pickup down onto the E string. And then coming back when we land back on the E string. But all very, very uh, basic stuff there. So that riff is played four times and then we walk up to the B with the following. So that's just F sharp, G sharp, open A. A sharp, so second and fourth frets on the E string, open A string, then the A sharp first fret, and then we're to the B, so. And that's a very common walking lead into a chord, okay? So then we just have that cool riff on B that sounds like this. So that's just B, B flat, and A, but we're not gonna focus on that one for now, that's very, very simple. We're gonna focus more on the other two riffs in here. So, when the vocals come in on the verse, Bruce plays that riff that we just played on F sharp up at B. Now, it would be really easy to just stick everything up one string and play it like this. But if you watch Bruce playing it, he generally plays it further up the neck here, starting at the seventh fret. Now I think that's because he's going to be moving into, you know, it, when we move into the chorus, he's, he's up in that area. Whereas, you know, down here, he's down here. So, he plays the B down here. But then when he plays the riff, he moves up here. So in terms of playing that riff, it's the same thing. We're starting at that B there, seventh fret of the uh, of the E string, and then we've got that sixth to seventh up there, which is actually the sixth to the seventh frets on the D string. So, so in terms of the fingering, you can use that second finger again for the uh, first note. Then, first and second fingers. Then you're going to want to use the uh, first and second fingers for that little move from the D to the D sharp there. So, then. You have a choice here. You can either use the third finger or the fourth finger. I prefer using the fourth finger, the pinky, to play 
just seems a lot neater. So that's going to be fourth finger and first finger for the seventh and fifth frets on the E string. So I use the fourth and first fingers there. But like I said, you can use the third and uh, first fingers. I just find it easier with that fourth finger. So when you've played that, it means you're probably going to play the B there on the repeat with the fourth finger. So you just play with the fourth finger for the B and then shift up. First time round, you're probably going to play it with the uh, second or third finger, but then fourth finger for the rest. So that riff's played four times and then there's a lead up to E at the seventh fret of the A string with just this little chromatic move of. So we have. So that's B, D, D sharp. So seventh fret E string, fifth and sixth frets on the A string leading us into this E. So. We have this cool riff on E that sounds like this. So for the notes there, we're on the E, seventh fret of the A string. Play that three times. Then we have this G sharp there at the sixth fret of the D string up to the E at the ninth fret of the G string. So play that twice, that G sharp to the E, so. Then we play the A at the seventh fret of the D string, and again move up to that E. But don't worry about seeing that as, you know, a little, uh, almost like pedal line. Don't worry about that. After you've hit the A, just move up to the E, down to the D, down to the B, so. 9th fret, 7th fret on the G string, then the 9th fret on the uh, D string, so. Then we just repeat the D down to the B, and then back up to the E, so. Then we repeat that line, but there's a variation on that second time, so. Same thing there, G sharp up to the E, but then, so we've got the G sharp to the A there. We play that three times, the A. Then twice on the B, ninth fret of the D string, and then up to the D and the E, seventh fret to ninth fret on the G string, so. Okay, so. around that a few times. Play each of them in isolation, then you can put them together. So the whole of that line, two, three, four. Then we just slide down with that finger and we come back to back to that riff. So for the fretting hand there, you can use whatever you want for the E. You can use the first finger, second finger, third fingers. So let's say I'm using the second finger. Then we have first finger and fourth finger, taking the G sharp to the E, then just move up with the first finger to the fourth finger, so. And then I'm just using the first and fourth fingers for all of that. But you can use the third finger, so. So. Usually you'll probably rise up from the A up to that E with the first and fourth fingers just because you've been playing that previously, but then after you come down, that's probably where you'd switch to the third finger. So. Then same again. Again, just all first and fourth finger there. So from a nuts and bolts perspective, both of these lines work around the chord tones and a basic Mixolydian scale pattern. If you've ever wondered how you can make use of modes like the Mixolydian, this is a great example. So if we focus on the verse riff in B, so. That's all working around a B7 chord, so a B dominant seven chord. And if you've 
watched this channel much before, you should already know a little bit about chord tones. If not, there's a link to uh, a lesson on chord tones in the description below. But for now, we have this outline of the B7 chord. So that's B, then we got the D sharp, F sharp, and A. So root, the major third, perfect fifth, and the flat seven. Don't worry about all the lingo that I'm about to be coming out with because <laughs> it's actually really, really simple. You just have to get used to what these patterns are gonna be. So that's a B7, B, D sharp, F sharp, and A. So seventh fret on the E string, then sixth and ninth frets on the A string, and then the seventh fret up on the, uh, up on the D string. So that's the outline of that B7. Uh, and that is the chord that this this riff is based around. So if we had the chord over it, it's just that we're working around the chord tones. So you can extend that a little. So you can play the octave of the B there at the ninth fret of the D string, carry on up. You've got the eighth fret on the G string, the 11th fret on the G string. And you want to go down a little below, so the B down to the A there at the fifth fret of the E string. So that's the chord tones of that B7 in that area. So those are the chord tones of B7. They are the main framework that we're working around. Those are the consonant notes. If that chord of B7 is played, those notes will work. But we can also work around the notes of the chord. So the non-chord tones, that's everything else, they all work just as well in a bass line. You just have to know how to use them. You can approach the chord tones, you can pass between them, you can move outside of them and come back, you can chromatically move between them, you can do what you want as long as you focus on the main chord tones as your safe notes, so you resolve to them. So if I just mess around with the chord tones of that B7, you can just start to add more and more notes in there as long as you resolve to the basic chord tones. So one popular move that you'll see all the time when playing around with the dominant seven chord is the minor to major third approach. The chord has a major third in it. So for that B7, it's gonna be the D sharp, but we can approach into that from a half step, which is one fret below, which gives us, gives us that cool bluesy sound. So remember that move. The next thing to look at is the basic chord scale for that dominant seven. Now, there are many different scales that you can use to play over dominant sevens, in jazz, you'll find people using a whole host of crazy diminished whole tone and altered scales. But the most basic of scales for use with a dominant seven like this is the mixolydian. So the mixolydian just fills in the chord tones with a basic major second, perfect fourth, and major sixth. So just think major scale and flatten the seventh. Now, one of the most common moves that you'll see in bass lines when outlining dominant seven chords with the mixolydian is the sixth to the seventh. So here, that's gonna be the G sharp to the A, okay? So you'll have heard that move a million times. You hear it a lot in funk tunes. That kind of thing. And you'll even get it in slap lines. That thing there. So, now back to pump it up. What do we have? We have... That sixth to the seventh move right off the bat. And then we got that minor to major third. And then we're just outlining the chord tones there with the root and that flat seven. So that's that mixolydian vibe, that little approach note up to the flat seven there with the major six. Minor to major third. And you will hear that time and time and time again in various riffs. So every time you hear that, that kind of thing, that's that minor to major third. And every time you hear that kind of thing, that's that sixth to the seventh. So then we have the chorus riff. And again, we're gonna use the dominant seven chord and mixolydian scale, but this time on E. So the chord tones for that E7 are gonna be E, G sharp, B, and D, okay? Seventh fret on the A string, then sixth and ninth frets on the uh, D string. And then we've got that seventh up on the top, on the seventh fret, actually, the D there, so. And you can include the octave and you can bring that seventh there on the fifth fret. That's the E7 chord, so we're working around that. And obviously you can play the Mixolydian scale as well. So again, major scale with that flattened seventh. 
So now let's look at the riff. So we start on the root note. Then we have G sharp up to that E there. That's the notes of that chord. Remember, E7, that G sharp is the third. And we're using the octave of the E there. So Then we've got the fourth, that little passing note, and then so. And then we come down through the chord tones. We've got the root, that seventh, and the fifth, so. And then, again, all based around the chord tones of that E7. So this riff is very, very chord tone heavy on that dominant seven. And then for the second half, same again, we're passing up in through that A, so. Again, coming up through the chord tones, B, D, and E. So this is how you make use of chord tones. It's a really cool line. You know, you listen to that song and it really catches the ear, but all he's doing is working around the chord tones. This is why learning chord tones and a few little scale of things like that, but mainly chord tones, that's why learning all that stuff is really, really great for when you're trying to create melodic bass lines like this, because instead of just playing good old root notes, you can start playing you know, all this kind of stuff. So that's two great riffs from Bruce Thomas. Breaking the riffs down into the component chord tones and scale movements can be really, really useful if you're looking to create riffs of your own. Yes, rhythm also plays a part, but if you can learn how to create interesting lines from a set of chord tones by adding approach notes and, you know, other melodic devices, then you're halfway there. So if you're interested in learning any more about the theory-based stuff that I just showed, check out this video for more information. Also, get on over to the Talking Bass website where you'll find over 750 free bass lessons, all categorized for ease of navigation. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel for weekly lessons every Friday, and leave me a comment to let me know what other cool bass lines you'd like me to break down. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.